Meltem. Meltem and I met at, I think, Bosphorus Toastmasters, and we've been working together ever since. She wanted me to come and present pathways to you. What I didn't tell her, though, is that I hope sometime to come to Turkey, not for Toastmasters, but my background is in archaeology, and there's so many wonderful archaeological sites in Turkey. Someday I hope to excavate there, and then maybe I can attend a Toastmasters meeting in person if this COVID ever, ever goes away. I invite all of you to turn your videos on so we can have an, an interactive session. First, I want to ask, did you fill out the mentee that Melton put in the email? I got eight responses. Was there anyone who didn't? If so, I will put the link in so that you can see it. Because I always like to ask whenever I, whenever I uh, do a pathway session is why did you join Toastmasters? Did anyone, is anyone here who didn't put it in? Well, I'm gonna, if you didn't, I'm gonna put the link in and you can go to that link. You won't even have to put the number in. And the question on that mentee is, why did you join Toastmasters? And since I don't speak Turkish yet, though I am uh, practicing it on Duolingo, I ask you to put it in, in in English. So thank you for that. I've got eight responses so far. Is anyone else going to put in a, a response? If you'd like to post something in the chat to me, do it to the Lori2 account, because that, that chat I can see. So I'll give it a minute. Oh, we got two more responses. I'll give it just a brief moment to see if we get another one. Then we'll see what, what responses we received. All right, you can continue if you're still typing, but let's start seeing the responses. Public speaking is why this person joined. They're an engineer and want to be a better communicator and a better presenter at meetings. And this person didn't feel comfortable uh, presenting when they came across foreigners. And another skill wants to be a good listener. And those are all great reasons to join Toastmasters. Improve leadership and English communication skills to feel comfortable on stage more great reasons. I wanted to overcome my fear of public speaking. Public speaking. Oops, a mistake, I think here. I want to improve both speaking and leadership skills. To improve skills about communication and speaking in public and to meet new people. You know, I hear some people even meet in Toastmasters and get married. That may not be what this person meant, but it does happen. To connect with others and discover skills and talents. To build up public speaking skills and practice. That's a great reason to join. To improve communication skills in front of people. And that looks like the end of our, our responses. So we had 10 responses. Welcome to those who just joined. We're talking about reasons why people joined Toastmasters. And there were some commonalities. What were some common reasons? You can either say it or put it in the chat. Public speaking. Public speaking or communication. There were different aspects of communication and those responses weren't there. Mm -hmm. It was practicing English being comfortable talking to others, public speaking, and a lot of leadership. Toastmasters tagline is where leaders are made. And connection with others. Exactly, connecting with others as well. And to build some of those skills and to get more comfortable and confident in public speaking, Toastmasters education program is an important part of that. And what's our education program now? Let me hear it. Starts with a P. Come on, everybody knows Pathways. this one. There you go, Pathways. Pathways. 
Now I'm going to launch a poll so we can see kind of where the people are who are here are with pathways. Let me see. Okay, so I'm going to launch this poll now. I have just a couple of questions and then together we'll see See the end. So just asking, have you selected a path and what progress do you have in pathways? This gives me a sense to see uh, what experience level we have in the webinar. All right, six of you have participated. So keep going, we'll give it another little bit. We have, there's two questions. If you can't see it, just scroll down. I can't participate because of being the host. That's right, the host can't. Uh, Tuana, if you want to put your responses in the chat to me, private chat to me, that's fine. All right, hey, two more, come on, you can do it. You can do it. We'll give you another few seconds and then we'll end it and see where we're at. All right, I'm gonna count down 10, nine, eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, one. And poll. All right, let's share the results. So we see what everyone put. So out of the eight people who participated, half of you have a path. So great job. Two of you, or one of you says no. Three of you say no, but you're promising to get one soon. So that's encouraging. I always like those. And then the progress that we have in Pathways, two of you have given at least one speech, one's finished level one, two have finished more than one level. We have someone who's completed a path and a couple haven't quite started their path yet. So we've got a mixture of, of experience here with some people who aren't quite as comfortable with Pathways, some who haven't started and some who actually could lead this webinar. So you don't need me, you could do it. Well, let's get going and talk about getting started with pathways. We're gonna talk about getting to your path, explore level one, and because level one just changed a month ago, We'll take a look at what level one looks for anyone selecting a path on or after October 27. And then we'll do a little tour around base camp. I always like to start to go to pathways by going to the toastmasters.org website. And you should see that on your screen now. Feel free if you wanna follow along by logging in as well, but I'm gonna share the screen. So for those who can't log in or wanna peek back to Zoom once in a while to make sure they're in the same spot, can see where I am. And I go to toastmasters.org and click on login. Then I log in, I have it set up so it remembers who I am. We'll let it log in. All right, and then once you log in, it says welcome, whatever your name is. And if you click there on the welcome, spot, it will take you to your profile. And right at the top, it has a user interface for Pathways. Now, I'm going to talk about this part at the very right. First of all, that's the navigator, this light blue square. If you haven't explored the navigator, make sure you do. And as you get new members into your clubs, make sure and direct them to the navigator once they get their path. It's sort of an introduction to Toastmasters. It talks about what Toastmasters is, what Pathways is, the different meeting roles, the different officer roles, contests, and it gives a lot of great information. It's a great one-stop place for information. That's great for beginners especially. It's interactive here. It can be selected in different languages. So I don't see Turkish here yet. I'm sure someday it will be. It's also available as a PDF. It's in everyone's base camp as well, but this is a nice spot to get to it in the interactive mode. 
And again, this is perfect to show your new members or your newer members to help them get acquainted with Toastmasters. This middle maroon square, when a new member comes here, it would say choose a new, new path free because your first path is free. When selecting additional paths, it's $20 for $20 uh, US for a subsequent path if it's online and then there's additional charge if you're getting the, the printed materials path. On the left, this is where you go to base camp. Now, if you're in multiple clubs, as I am, you can select which club you interact with. But your path materials is the same, no matter which club you're signed into. Whenever you select a path, it doesn't matter which club you give the speech at. It's your path to give the speeches and complete the projects however you want. Any questions so far? And again, send them if you, you can either speak out when I ask for questions or you can put them in the chat to Lori too, or put them in the chat to everyone and I'll see them. All right. Now to go to base camp, I'm gonna click go. And we're at the base camp homepage. No matter where you are in base camp, if you wanna quickly get back to base camp, your homepage, just click on the Toastmasters Pathways logo. It's a nice quick way to get back here. I'm gonna scroll down. We've got our education transcript and we'll go in that in a minute. A section of speech evaluations, tutorials. There's all kinds of stuff if you scroll down and we'll go over a number of these areas today. There's a quick view here, which will give some of the items in your, in your, in your paths and learning section, but not everything is there. So this can be confusing. I have four active paths, but only, only three of them are here. It's doing, it's looking at it alphabetically because my team collaboration path isn't showing. To find your path, once you get into base camp, you can click on your paths and learning, or if you see it down here in this quick view, you can click on open curriculum here. It'll take you to the same place. I'm gonna click on paths and learning, and you'll see everything that you have in your transcript area. You'll see paths, and these are the ones with little books beside them. This is something new. I don't know if some of you have seen. You have the option to download some supplemental reading, level one, that came out just a few weeks ago. And that has links to articles in the Toastmaster magazine that will help you with some of the topics that you encounter in level one. Anytime you look at different things, such as resources, project descriptions, it also show up in your, in your transcript and there's the navigator. So you can also access it in your path as a PDF. You can have a lot of things here or you can keep it clean and just have the items that you, that you wanna look at. Now I have two types of paths here. These are online motivational strategies and presentation mastery. I also have a print path. If you have someone in your club that has a print path, that means that they are getting the paper manuals, but they don't get all the projects all at once. First, they would get levels one and two, the books for those. And if I go in here by clicking open curriculum, it's gonna look a little different. I can't access my projects for this path in here because I'm doing it via books. Sometimes people get the printed path and they don't understand what it is or didn't mean to get it. So if you see this, let them know that's the printed path and they should have gotten the, the, the books with it as well. All right, I'm going to click up here on Paths and Learning to get back to my transcript. 
And let's go into one of my paths. I'm gonna go into team collaboration. I'm gonna click open curriculum. And we're at level one. It shows the percentage of completion. It would show if anything was done. You can see that I haven't done a lot yet on this path. I've completed my icebreaker. I've actually completed this project, but I haven't marked it complete in here. I wanted to save that to show you guys today. And tomorrow I'm giving the speech for researching and presenting. This is the original level one where you have the three projects. Even though there's three projects, there's actually five things that you do in level one. You give your icebreaker, which is just a four to six minute speech about you. And that's been traditional in Toastmasters since the beginning to have that icebreaker speech. Then the next project is evaluation and feedback. And you do three things in that project. First, you give another speech, five to seven minutes long, then you give that speech again. Now it's recommended you give that speech a second time utilizing the feedback that you received for that first speech in that project. That way you get the practice of taking a speech and redoing it a little bit based on the feedback you got from your evaluator. If you don't wanna repeat the speech, you could do a new speech for that second speech. But I found that Toastmasters really enjoy this project because often we give a speech and then we're off to the next speech. And this way we get to take a, a speech and make it a little bit better based on some feedback. And it's also great for your fellow Toastmasters who are listening to your speech and watching it because they get to see how making some changes really does improve a speech. The third item in that project is giving an evaluation, being a speech evaluator. Those are the three things you do in evaluation and feedback. And then the third project in this level one is researching and presenting, which is just researching about a topic and then giving a five to seven minute speech about whatever you've researched. Now, often for new members, it's a good idea to have them give the speeches in order and projects. They're new, they're nervous, they're not comfortable or confident in speaking it in front of a group, perhaps, and they're new to Toastmasters. But you can do these projects in any order. Now I'm going to, any questions before I open up the icebreaker? Okay, I'm going to click on launch to open it up. Now, when you have a brand new path, it'll the button will say activate. And then you'll click that and then you'll have to launch it to open it up and it will open on a separate tab. And pathways will remember if I, the last place you were at in this project. So we'll see where I was the last time I opened this project. All right, looks like I was at the end. So I'm gonna use the jump menu at the bottom to go down to the beginning of it. In the beginning, it shows you how to navigate through the project. There's a lot of different ways that information is presented. You click the arrows, the left and the right arrows to go to the next section and page. There's also times when you click little buttons such as next or back. And it's showing you that there's different ways to navigate throughout this project. And there's always some basic introduction information, what's, what the project is about, what the assignment is. Whenever you get these gray things, that means it's telling you something down below so here it's telling you that you can print your project. If you don't wanna go through and click through the project, there is a spot near the end and I'll show you where you can download the PDF of that project if you prefer to read it or maybe you wanna print it, print it out or maybe just print out a page or two that was particularly helpful. So I'm gonna click on directions, then I can advance through the project. There's an assessment at the beginning of every project and that 
just has a few questions to help you think about the skills that this project covers, where you are at the beginning. And then you'll also answer the same questions at the end of the project to see how you've come or what you, how you've grown. You might have grown, you might, might not have. It's just a simple assessment just to help you think about these different areas. And I've already answered it, but you go through each one and make sure you click a number between one to five and make sure that you answer all of the questions and then go on. It talks about competencies and then it starts getting into the meat of the project. There's videos at times. There may be resources in the icebreaker project. There's an icebreaker outline worksheet and you can either just look at it or you can download the PDF, save it to your computer and it does a really nice job at helping new Toastmasters think about how to really put that speech together. A nice outline has them thinking about transitions, which are so important. It's a really nice resource. And each project will have various information. Sometimes you have to click on other buttons to see everything. And here's another spot where you have to click. Sometimes people don't realize they need to click on these different buttons to get all of the information. And then getting ready for your speech. Telling you what to do, what to do some things to think about. Completing it. There's a project checklist, which is usually in two or three spots in the project. Gives you some basic information. Now at the Your Evaluation page, you'll have your evaluation resource, which is what you either give to your evaluator, email it to them, or if you use some of the online Toastmaster-based websites, such as Free Toast Host or Easy Speak, or the, to the WordPress for Toastmasters, it'll be on the agenda so that they can give you the evaluation after your speech. There's the Print My Project, which is where you go to if you want to look at the project in, an, in a PDF form. Now these file, these files are not small and there's a lot of color. So it does take a lot of ink to print them out. So they might be 20 to 30 or 40 pages, depending on the project. Here again is the other resources that were in the project. So that way, if you didn't get it before, you can get it, you can get it after. Once you give your speech, then you go to the assess your skills after, and it has the same questions as before. If you've answered all the questions in that, you'll see this comparison statement. Once you've marked everything complete and you close out the project, then it puts a nice little check mark there to show you that you've completed that project and it's marked completed and it says completed one, minimum four because it's counting the completion request. Any questions on going through the, the level one? All of the projects kind of work the same way where you open them up, it opens in a separate tab. You go through the basic, you go through them the same basic way. There's the assessment, pre and post. Again, you can put your questions in the chat at any time. I don't see any questions. Now I told you I saved marking this evaluation and feedback complete for you guys, because this is something that people struggle with. So I'm going to open this up. Looks like my cat has decided she's not happy I'm in her chair, so she's making a, a cameo appearance. Now I'm at the back here of it. If you want to go to a particular spot, in a project, you can use the jump menu at the bottom to go to any section. So I can, I want to go to assess your skills before. I'm not sure if I did the assessment for this. It's giving me the directions. I'm going to click the blue directions to make it. Doesn't look like. All right. 
I often just mark the first one at threes. The beginning. Get off the cursor. Um, all right. Now, once you complete that, there's no next, and there should be a submit. Where's my submit? It means I skipped one. And this happens. People go to the last one, there's no submit, and they think, oh, I just go on. But if there's no submit, it means you skipped one. So I skipped that one, didn't I? Now there's a submit. All right, I've got my, my first one. Now I'm going to find my second one. I'm going to close this out. I'm going to find the second one. Assess your skills after at the bottom. Yes, yes. The same instructions. All right, hopefully I am a little better than I was. Evil. All right, I don't see the submit button yet, but I do now. So I didn't skip anything when I click submit. Now, if I haven't clicked submit on that, if I go back to my, my level, it's not marked it complete. Here's what happens sometimes is people don't do the assessment, but they go through and look, it says, congratulations, you've completed it. Well, no, I haven't because it's not marked as marked as complete. You have to complete that second assessment or it's not going to mark it complete. Oh, it took all my answers away, didn't it? And I put my answers back again. So that congratulations page is there, whether or not they actually finished it. And that confuses people. When I click submit, I see the comparison screen. If you ask them, if they say, my project won't get marked complete, ask them if they've taken the assessments. If they say, well, I'm sure I have. Ask them, do you see the comparison screen? If they don't, then they haven't done those assessments and they must do them before your project is marked complete by the system. So now I've done my assessments. And if I close this tab, all right, that's my previous one here. And we'll go back to my project and look, now my path, now it's marked it complete. So you have to do that with every project. You've got to go through it, mark those assessments complete so that it marks the project complete. And after my speech tomorrow, after I do the researching and presenting, then I can, there'll be a button beside the level one completion that will allow me to submit the request to have level one approved. And that will go to, since I'm in two clubs, it'll go to the VPE of whoever, uh, whichever club I'm logged into at the time. It also goes to whoever is in Club Central marked as your club contact. And some people don't realize that it goes to, to there. Originally, it only went to there. So if you're not sure if, who that goes to or who's marked as a club contact in your club's Club Central, make sure and check it out. Make sure the right person is there and let that person know this isn't for you, but Toastmasters has it go to you. Make sure that that if needed, it gets forwarded to the right person. The other levels work the same way where you activate the projects, open them up, go through them, do what the project requires. In level three, you have one required project, plus you go into the elective projects and you can you could open them all if you want, but you only have to do two in level three. But you can look at any of them. Level four, there's one required project and electives. The electives are the same on all the paths. The only exception is if in your project, or if in your path, you have a, 
you may have a project that's required for your path, but is an elective for everyone else. For example, in level five, there are some paths that have the high performance leadership project as the level five required project. For those paths, they won't see the high performance leadership project in their list of electives because they're already doing it. There's fewer electives, the higher up you go. The projects in the upper levels are, are a little more meatier. They take longer and it's more, they're more comprehensive. It's not just about giving a speech. It might be leading a project. It might be being an officer for at least six months. And we'll talk a little bit more about those upper level projects next, next week when I come. We've done a quick review of level one. Any questions on that before I show you what the new level one looks like? You guys are a little too quiet. Everybody still there? Yes, we are here. All right, thank you. Thank you, Melton. I appreciate that. All right, I'm gonna go back to my, the home page just for practice by clicking on that logo. Now, when level one came out, the new one, I bought a new path just so I could see and get my hands on it and open up the projects. So I actually have two presentation masteries. There's a printed version that I showed you. And then I bought another one online. And this one will show you the new level one. So with the new level one, and these are in paths that are selected on or after 1027. And right now it's only the English paths. The paths in the other languages haven't been translated with the new projects. Eventually those will also move to the new level one, the updated level one. All of the printed paths will continue to have the original level one. If you have a path that you haven't opened yet or done anything with, you will have the original level one. So there's going to be some time where we've got uh, two things going on with the paths. The icebreakers in the new level one, all right, long-term Toastmasters tradition, that hasn't changed. But then we see two new projects that weren't here before. Writing a speech with purpose. And I really like this, this project they go through, really thinking about a purpose for your speech, narrowing down that speech. Uh, with the, with to, to figure out a purpose so your speech isn't so so scattered and then transitions in different sections of a speech and I think it's a really nice project and then a lot of Toastmasters thought that it was really important to have more information on vocal writing and body language in level one there are for both of these topics there are electives in level three but a lot of Toastmasters provided Toastmasters feedback to say, we think newer members need to, need to be introduced to those earlier. And so there's a brand new project, Introduction of Vocal Variety and Body Language. They've also done, oh, and then there's the Evaluation and Feedback Project. And that's the same as in the original level one. Three things, give a speech, redo the speech, using the feedback and then being a, a speech evaluator. So that hasn't changed and the icebreaker hasn't changed. With two new projects, so it does mean that for members who have this path, instead of taking five weeks to complete level one, it will take those members six weeks. So as you're planning out your year, if you're the VPE or if you're the officers thinking about how can we reach these DCP goals, for these people to complete level one, it'll take them one extra meeting. And I'm gonna open up one of the, the pro newer projects. They've done two things. One is they've written, they have these new projects. They've also changed the navigation on all of the projects for level one to give more help to members because people were struggling with that assessment like I showed you. They were struggling with the different ways that they could see the information. 
So I'm going to open up one of these new projects. Come on, you can do it. You can do it, Toastmasters website. All right, and you see I was at the back, Toastmasters remembers. I'm gonna open up the jump menu here at the bottom. They've even done the outlines of them different where there's different parts. They've broken up these projects in different parts. Even the icebreaker and the evaluation and feedback now has different section headings to make it easier for people to navigate. I'm going to go to the beginning of, of this. This is the writing your speech with purpose. And instead of having that picture of the guy with the different arrows, there's a little video to help people understand how to navigate through the project. And there's other different helps. I'm not going to play the video here. They have the sections here. They have a lot of review sections helping them understand what's in there. You still have to click different places. But in these projects in the, and this, they've only done this with the level one projects in the updated level one paths, is they just have more information on the icebreaker and evaluation and feedback. They've tweaked some of the content of it, I did notice. It's still basically the same, but, but there is a, a little different, different content. And then the assessment, they've got a whole little section here to give people help on how to take that assessment because people were, were not filling it out or were skipping questions, helping them to understand how to take that assessment. So that should help solve some of those frustrations. Again, it's section heading, which talks about the different areas or shows the different areas in there and more help saying this is what you need to do to see everything here so they're trying to make it easier for people to understand how to navigate through the the projects i don't want to go through the questions they do also have some different resources i've noticed that they're have links to different section of base camp to help people get more comfortable with different areas of base camp and giving feedback to members, which I think is a good thing. All right, I'm gonna jump down to the, do, do, do. you still got that same evaluation and resources where see, there's the evaluation form for that, the PDF of the project, here they gave again an outline worksheet and other resources. And here's a couple of links. So they're they're driving people to two different areas of base camp to help them with their projects and to help them uh, know how to give feedback to club members. And then there's a little video on how to complete the project. So it's marked complete. So they're really trying to help people understand how to navigate, how to complete the project so that that way they're, they're more successful at, at going through the project and getting it marked complete. So I really like what they've done with the navigation of this. I think it'll make it easier for newer members. And all of the level one projects for these paths with the, with the updated level one have that navigation. And once you get go through level one, you're, you're fairly comfortable with, with how the projects work. And so the other ones, the other projects will have the regular navigation. One thing I wanted to show you or talk about in this introduction of vocal variety and body language is there's a couple of different evaluation forms in there, there's the regular one, the evaluation resource, and it primarily seems to cover on that second page where you do the ratings, the one through five ratings when you're evaluating a speech, it primarily covers body language. There is one spot for vocal variety, but then what they've done is they have another form 
which they call speech profile. And that covers just different aspects of vocal variety. And this gives the people who have this project, this gives them the option of de determining how they want to be evaluated for that project. And here, so here's the normal evaluation form and it's the same on the front. You've got those three spots. And if I go to the next page, you've got the ratings. And a lot of it is, you've got clarity, vocal variety, and the rest is, here's some body, do some gestures, eye contact, and then movement. So it's more, kind of more focused on, on, I'm on more focused on the gestures than vocal, but they've got a speech profile. And this one looks the same in the, in the front, but the second page is all vocal variety based. So loudness, volume, pitch, voice quality, articulation, timing or rate, vocal variety. So if you're completing this project, you could give your, or have your evaluator evaluate you based on the, the regular evaluation resource or you could give your evaluator that resource and have someone else in the club evaluate you on the speech profile. Or maybe you only want to be evaluated for that project on the vocal variety and you give this speech profile to your main evaluator. So it gives you a lot of options with this project, which I think is, is going to be fun and very useful for us as, as we do this project. Now you might wonder where's the researching and presenting project? It's still here, but now it's part of level three. It's an elective in level three. And so people can still do that. They have uh, tweaked it. They have uh, beefed it up a little bit. Uh, here it is. So it's still there. It's just moved from level one, tweaked a bit and is in level three. Now I'm going to give you a link to my District 62 Pathways resources, and it'll have the it'll have a breakdown, a comparison of the two level ones, and another resource has information on the uh, on these projects, because as you're getting new members into your club, this is what they're going to have in their path, and that's going to be important for you guys to to understand, so you can help them get going with their paths. I'm going to go to home here in the upper left left corner. Any questions? You guys don't have any questions. Are you are you learning anything from this? Is it helpful for you? Yes, thank you. All right, let's see some some reactions here. Give me a thumbs up if you're learning something or finding it helpful. Some of you are pros and, and may not. All right. I learned how to complete up. my patch on the system. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yes, I always like to go through that because it's kind of a kind of a pain in that way. If you and then if you know, then you can help others in your club as well. So we're back to the home page of base camp. We were in here, the paths and learning. This section, speech evaluations, is a really nice section because it has all of the evaluation forms for all of the speeches in everybody's path. I don't know if they have yet added the new projects in level one. Let's see, I'm not sure. Uh, no, it looks like they haven't yet. So they'll get that. It took them a little bit when they added the projects for the engaging humor a few years ago, but they'll get those here. But this is all of the other projects. Let's say you want to, you're evaluating somebody and you know what project they're doing, but it's not signed up yet on Easy Speak. And so you want to pull up the evaluation form just to be prepared so you know what they're what their objectives are. And if they're doing the connecting with storytelling project, it doesn't have to be a, something in your path, 
for you to find it here. And so you can open up any of the evaluation forms from here. And this can be very helpful to be able to have that here. In addition, in the upper right corner, there's a how to evaluate tutorial. Now in the evaluation and feedback project, there's a tutorial and information on evaluating and that's great material. But this is a great resource to that as well. Make sure all of your new members watch this tutorial before they give their first evaluation. It opens up a, a screen and they have somebody do a little bit of a speech. And you'll laugh because they purposely have them do kind of bad where they're not using good eye contact, they're nervous. And so it's, it's kind of funny because it probably was hard for them to purposely do it not, not very good. And then an evaluation form will pop up for you and you can type in an evaluation based on that brief part of a speech and the narrator will share her evaluation. So it's a great way to get a sense of, here's something that you've watched, what are some things you could put in the evaluation form? So I always really recommend this, how do we evaluate tutorial? And even if you're not a new member, it's a great, it's a great tutorial. So make sure and, and watch that. And go back to the home page here. Tutorials and resources, they do have a lot of different videos and the project descriptions. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on there, but feel free to go in there and explore. This again was the quick view. Now my feedback is where you can see if anyone gave you feedback and you can request feedback from your different members. So I'm gonna click on there. And I, now I can only request feedback of the members in my club who have paths. If you're in more than one club, it's the members of the club that you're logged into at the time and you can switch back and forth. So you see, I've requested feedback from some people. They, the problem is people don't know about this feature so they don't know how to see if someone's requested feedback. But that can be helpful. You click on the box and you're able to search for the people in your club and you could put in everybody, you could put in just one or two people, you can make it anonymous. I think it's if you do at least five or six people so you don't even know who said what, you have a lot of different options here. I'm gonna use the back arrow a couple times to go back. Lori. Yes. Do you have to request feedback or can someone just go and give you feedback without your request? Well, if you're going through here, that's requesting feedback. Now there's the other section where you can give feedback uh, to everyone and that's where I'm gonna go in a minute here. Okay. So the my feedback is where you can, where you, where you request feedback. Now, if you go to my badges, this will show give badges for starting a path. Once you complete your icebreaker, once it's marked complete in base camp, then you get what I call the path activated badge. So visionary communication was my first one. As soon as my icebreaker was marked complete in my level one, this badge showed here. And then as you complete levels, as those levels are marked complete, and then you can see I have the mentor program. I've done a complete path. Once your path is finished, you get the, the path in full color, the logo in full color. And you see, I started the team collaboration one. Now this week when I complete level one of, of my team collaboration path, it won't be a separate badge. Here where it shows level one here, there'll be a little number two and then if I do three paths, three, four, so that way you don't have a separate badge for each level one you do, but you'll be able to see. And if that's not showing, but you've, pre you've actually completed level one, is there a reason for that? Then I would say that it's not marked complete in the path. So go back and check things like your evaluation assessments and things, right? Your assessments. Right, well, first I would check to see if the level is, is marked complete. 
Okay. Well, if it's been if it's been uh, approved by the base camp manager, which is the VPE, the president, and the secretary, yeah. the VPE does it. I got notice from Toastmasters it was complete. But well, they send a project, but you know, we can speak uh, another time if you want me to take a look at, at yours. No worries. No worries. Thanks, Lori. Now, why am I showing you this? Just to show you all my nice badges? No, because here's the thing is you can look at badges of your club members. Why would you want to do that? Can you think of any reasons why you'd want to see the badges of your club members? It's a good way to see who's more experienced or. And it's a good way that we can help each other because yeah. let's say you're mentoring somebody. If you're not a base camp manager, you can't go into the base camp manager section to see if they've selected a path or if they've completed that look, that icebreaker project. But if you can go into their profile and see it, then you can kind of keep, keep track of things a little bit. You can look up different people's profile by searching for them. Now, if they don't have a path, you're not going to you're not going to find them in here. I forget which club I went in. So you can either search for a person. Am I in this one? Oh yes I am. You start typing and you notice that some names came up. If you can't remember what the person's name is or what club you're in and you're just drawing a blank, you can type in the word club and press enter. And then you're able to see everybody. I'm going to click on people here on the left. And then all of my club members who have a path who were logged in. This is my Whirlpool Club. I can tell from the names. Uh, this person up here, Shaju, he's in another club as well. So if he weren't logged in under Whirlpool, I wouldn't see him. Even though I know he has a path, he has several. So you want to remember that if you don't see somebody's name, if they're in more than one club, you might not see them. So these are all of my club members who have a path and are logged in to this, to this club. And I can click on any name to go into their profile. Now I can't get into their paths. Only a base camp manager can in base camp manager section. But I can see their profile. I can see their information, their email, how long they've been in Toastmasters, their latest credential. If they've added any of the meeting roles, I would see that. I can't add it for them. I can't change it. But I can go to feedback. And this is where I can leave you can leave people feedback. So you need to look up their name first, go into their feedback section. And then I can say, Caroline, let's get together. And whoops, let's see. I'll give her some encouragement. You can do before this year. All right, we'll give her a little encouragement here. But I don't want everyone to see that. We'll just say Caroline, see that. So I can leave her a little feedback. I can post it. I can add a little badge if I want to do one of the the achievement, the, one of the badges, the feedback badges, adaptable, collaborative, exceptional. I'll say exceptional. Now, here's the thing. If you if you add a badge to a feedback, you don't have the option to make it private so that just that person can see it. So if you want to do a personal message and a badge, do them separately. So I'm going to post this. Now she may not know that it's here. You see, I left her other feedback. If someone leaves you feedback, you don't know it. So go into your base camp anytime you're in there and click on your feedback section to see if people have left you feedback. This is a great way that we can encourage each other and we can support each other, but there's no notification. Maybe someday there will be, that would be nice. But right now there's no notification. And so you have to go into your feedback. But it's a great way if someone gives a speech in your club, go into your base camp, pull up their profile 
and leave them a little feedback. It can, it's always nice to have something you can go to to be encouraged by and, and to get that support from, from our fellow Toastmasters. And here in the ePortfolio is where I can see her badges someone's badge. So here's what it looks like. Oh, because I gave her another exceptional. So she's done one path. She's in persuasive influence. As soon as that icebreaker is, has been marked complete, that badge goes in there. So if I were mentoring her, which actually I did mentor her, that's how I found out what path she was. Now I, I could have asked her and I probably did. But this also tells me because this goes in once the icebreaker is marked complete, if it's not there, and she's finished her icebreaker, I can go to her and say, hey, are you struggling with completing that project? Do you need some help? So this helps me be a better mentor because I can help her understand how to work base camp in those projects. Now, I don't know after that icebreaker's marked complete, I don't know if anything else is marked complete, but I can ask her and the base camp manager can check in base camp manager section. And we see she's done level one, level two, and level three here, and she's got some feedback badges. So this tells me she hasn't finished her level four. That's why I left her a message on level four. But you see how being able to go into someone's profile can help you not only be able to support them, but also can help mentor them. I see we've got five minutes left, I think. So I'm gonna stop sharing here and open it up for final questions. So I know you've got your, your speech craft going on and I don't wanna go over for that. We just took a, a, little, a little tour of base camp, explored the projects in level one, how to navigate level one, and then level two, what, the, what some of those differences what are you going to do next time? Right now I'm going to put a link in the chat. And this is a link to my resources. I create different uh, comparison charts and some different resources. I do have some resources on level the new level one. So you can see the difference between paths with the original and the ones with the new level one. I have some goal sheets in here. I, when we did the, the why do you want to join Toastmasters together? So many of you wanted to, to be better communicators. Well, the best way to, to become better communicators is give those speeches. So there's some goal sheets where you can decide, all right, when could I complete level one or two, three, four, or five? When, I could, when could I complete my path? And put some dates on there. Give it to your VPE. He or she would be appreciative and can help can help you by being an accountability partner. I don't know if that's a term you use in Turkish, but someone to say, hey, weren't you wanting to complete that path? I've decided I want to complete my team collaboration path by April 1st. So I'm telling people so they'll remind me. So I don't not do a speech because yes, I have that goal. Setting a goal and telling others about it can help you complete that goal. So that's the link for the resources. There's a lot of different resources on there. Next week, I'll be back. We'll be talking about level two and some of those upper level projects. Thank you. Any, any questions or, or comments about today or any questions you want covered next time? I know there's a feedback form already in the chat, so. Yeah, I saw that. They will Nothing. probably send you the feedback that everyone puts. Yeah, of course, we uh, better understand uh, this pathway issue. Uh, thank you, uh, you. And uh, this uh, subject is settled uh, in our head uh, better. Um, thanks your support. Well, thank you. Thanks to you. Uh, thank you, Nesalan. I appreciate that. Thank you for inviting me here to, to talk with you. And let, let Multum know if you have any specific questions about level two or upper level projects, 
uh, we can try to sneak those in.